Hi everybody, welcome to our vodcast on how to make a double line graph. In tonight's vodcast, what we're going to talk about are all the steps that you need to do to create a good solid double line graph and all the things that you need to include to create a good solid line graph. So why don't we get started here. The first thing you have to do is you have to set up the intervals for both axes, the x and the y axis. If we take a look at the bottom here, we see we have a, an example of a graph. Now remember, your y axis is the line that goes up, your x axis is the line that goes across. So when we talk about the intervals, we have to talk about or figure out the numbers that each line is going to be worth. So we see the interval for the y axis in this diagram is it goes up 10 to 20 to 30. So that means the difference between each line is 10 degrees in temperature, which means the interval is going to be 10. So the next line would be 40 and the next line would be 50. On the x-axis in time, in minutes let's say, we see that we go from one to two to three. So we see that each line goes up one minute in time. So that means our interval is going to be one minute. So if we go here, it'll be four minutes and then five minutes. So when we talk about the intervals, we're talking about the numbers of which we're gonna line or label the lines with. So let's take a look at and see how you can do that. Now, there's a quick, nice, easy math equation that you can remember to do this, and that's to take the highest data value in your data table and then divide it by how many lines you're going to use. And that's gonna be the interval that you're going to get. And to do that, let's take a look at an example. All right, so here's my example of a graph and I have my data table over here. So in a double line graph, what you're going to have is two sets of data that you're gonna put on the line. So here I have the number of bubbles per minute in plant A, and here I have the number of bubbles per minute in plant B. So because I'm creating a double line graph, I have to find both or the highest data point in both of these columns here. And when I do that, and I go up and down and take a look at my different data points, I notice that 50 is my highest value. So that's the number I'm going to use in my equation here to set up a line graph. So that being said, I'm going to take my calculator, so I can do the math here and clear this out. All right, I'm going to take my highest data point, which is 50, and then I'm going to divide it by the number of lines that I need to label in my y-axis. And counting earlier, I know that I have 42 lines here. So I'm going to take 50 and divide it by 42. And that's going to give me a, an answer of 1.19. Now, some people may round that up to 1.2 and go from 0 to 1.2, 2.4, 3.6, 4.8, and so forth. But that could be a little tricky because when we're working with decimals and adding decimals, it's easy to make a mistake labeling. And if you make one mistake and your intervals are not identical all throughout, then you're going to lose credit or get this graph wrong. So what I tell students to do is take that number and round to the next whole number. So in doing this graph, this number 1.19, I would have my students round up to two. And this is what they're y-axis would look like. You'll see that every single line goes up two bubbles per minute. And with that being said, I now have a, an axis that includes the highest data point in all the lower data points with it. Another thing to remember when you're setting up your axis, when you label your axis, make sure the numbers line up next to a line. This way we know that line is that value. So for example, down here, I know that two bubbles per minute is going to be this line. So when I hit this line, I know that means two. Students sometimes tend to label the blocks or put the number down next to the cube. So if they do it down next to the cube, then I don't know where in this box here is going to be two. However, if I have my number lined up next to a line, I know that that line is two bubbles per minute. So make sure all of your numbers line up next to the lines. Second of all, now that we've done the y-axis, we have to label the x-axis. And the x-axis labeling is going to be the same. We're going to take our highest data point, and our x-axis is going to be depth here, so our highest data point is 30, and we're going to take our um, number of boxes on the x-axis, which turns out to be 33. So I'm going to take 30, divide it by 33, and then get my answer of just under 1.9. So I'm gonna round up to the next number. One is a nice easy number to count by, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna label each number, each line rather, by one. 
Now, there's a couple of things you can do here. It's totally okay to uh, label every single line with a value of one. So we're going one all the way up to what should be 33. But this could get a little bit messy and this could get a little bit tricky. So if you have a nice even interval to go by, then what you can do, for example, is go every other. So in, for me personally, I would probably go every other because when I go every other, you see that it's a little bit more spaced out, a little bit easier to read and a lot easier on your eyes. So you would go one, two, and then write two, three, four, then write four, five, six, and write six. But it's totally okay if you're more comfortable with writing out every single number, labeling every single line. Okay, so now that we have the numbers down, um, what we can do is now label the or title the axes. So that's our next step in our um, vodcast here. Title all of your axes and make sure you title your graph. So axes are easy to title because once you label them, you just have to write the title, which is basically what those values mean. So when we take a look on the y-axis here, we see that these numbers, 84, 82, 78, represent the number of bubbles per minute per plant. So simply put for my title, I'm just going to put bubbles per minute, per, uh, bubbles per minute, or number of bubbles per minute. Down here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my data and then see that these numbers mean the depth that these plants are found at. So I'm going to label this with depth. Now there's another way you can do this to figure out where the numbers are supposed to go because if you're able to identify the independent variable and dependent variable, remember independent variable is the variable that we switch to see if there's an effect and the dependent variable is basically the change as a result of the independent variable, we're simply put the data that we record to see the change. So if you're able to identify that this is your independent variable and this is your dependent variable, but not quite sure where to put them on the graph, then here's an easy trick for you to remember. I'm just gonna hide these for a second. I'm gonna drag this over, okay? Always remember, your dependent variable is on the y-axis because you can draw a D there. You're not going to be able to draw a big I here because there's not a lot of space, but you can draw a really long D. So D stands for dependent. And your independent variable is always going to be on the x-axis. So you can draw a really long I here. That stands for independent. So remember, your independent variable will always be on the x-axis and your dependent variable will be on the y. So now that we've gone over that, the last thing we have to do here before we start graphing our data is to make sure we title our graph. Simply put, it's a general statement that you can make about the title or about the graph so the reader knows what they're looking at. But if you're having a, tr if you're having a hard time coming with a good uh, short title, a simple way to do it is just take your axes titles and then just put verses in the middle. Because you know, if we're taking a look at this graph, we're taking a look at that at the effects of depth on the number of bubbles per minute. So we can do depth versus number of bubbles per minute. And now I have my graph all set up. All I have to do now is plot my information and then connect the dots. When you do a double line graph, a good idea is to do one of two things. One, use either different shapes for your plots or your points, or two, when you draw the lines, make them different colors as you'll see. One other big important thing to do is make sure you plot one data point set at a time. So if you're going to start off with plant A, make sure you graph all of plant A before you get to plant B because it's going to get really crazy on the eyes. So let's take a look at how we're supposed to graph this. When we graph it, it's simply just finding our value on the x-axis and then running up that line until we intersect the point on the y-axis. And where those two points intersect, that's where your point goes. So in this example, time at one minute is 10 degrees. So I'm going to run up the one line until I hit 10 degrees, and then I'm going to draw a dot or some sort of symbol there. Two degrees or two minutes goes to 20. So in this example, I'm going to go up until this line intersects with 20 and draw a dot there. So that's what we're going to do on the next page. I'm going to start with plant A, and when you have a double line graph, make sure you draw a key, a legend, so we know exactly what it is that you are drawing, what your graph is saying. So you'll notice here in my example, the circle is going to represent the data points for plant A, and the triangle is going to represent the data points for plant B. Now this is the easy part. All right, all I'm going to do is take a look at my data and say, all right, at two meters, 
I have to put a dot at 29 bubbles per minute. So I'm gonna take my dot, I'm gonna move it on down, I'm gonna go down to two meters, I'm gonna run up this line until I get to about 29, which is right in between 28 and 30. So I'm gonna put that dot in the middle there. And that's my first data point. Next, what I'm gonna do is take a look and say, all right, at five meters of depth, I have to go to 36. So I'm gonna take my pencil as what you would do but for me I'm going to take this dot I'm going to go to five meters and I'm going to run it up the line until I get to 36 and where five intersects 36 I'm going to find my answer there so that's where I'm going to place my my marker or my dot and I'm going to keep going until I finish the rest of them so at 10 meters I'm going to run up till I hit 45 so 10 here 45 and then I'm going to put my third data point and I'm going to do the same for the rest. Once I've finished this and once I've plotted all my points for my data set, now I can connect the dots. So all I'm going to do at this point is just play everyone's favorite game as a kid, which was connect the dots. And I'm going to take my pencil or with a straight edge if I'm doing this on paper. And I'm just going to draw the lines until they connect the dots. And now, as you can see, I'm starting to draw a line graph. I'm going dot to dot. I'm not trying to shoot the average. I'm just connecting the dots as we did as kids. And then to finish this off, that would be my line graph. So you can see that the number, the number of bubbles per minute for plan A at depth increased and then decreased. All right. So now you'll see that I have circles for plant A and I have an orange line. So this makes it easy for the reader to identify that this is the data for plant A. So I'm just going to repeat the process for plant B. I'm going to take plant B, I'm going to take a look at its data, it's at 2 meters of depth, I have 21 bubbles per minute, so I'm going to take my pencil if I'm doing this on paper, but here I'm going to take my triangle, I'm going to go to 21 bubbles per minute at 2 minutes, and since it's between 20 and 22, I'm going to drop this triangle right in the middle, because 21 would be right there. Alright, my second point is 5 meters of depth and 27, so I'm going to go to five meters here. And I'm going to go to 27 again between 26 and 28. So 27 would be in the middle and that's where I'm going to put my triangle. All right. And then I'm going to do the same thing with the rest of my data points. At 10 meters of depth, I'm at 40. So I'm going to go to 10 and then here I'm going to hit 40 and then here are the rest of my data points for plant B. Just like I did with plant A, what I'm going to do now is connect the dots except this time I'm going to connect the dots with a different color. This way they stand out a little bit better. So I'm going to go triangle to triangle and then continue to connect the dots all the way through. So now we've created our double line graph. In this, this way the reader can see the data for one set of data for plant A, which is represented by the circles and orange lines. And they can see the data for plant B, which is the triangles and green lines. So as I referenced before, when you do the data sets or when you graph your data sets, you can either use different symbols as I did here. So I know that the circles are for plant A and the triangles are for plant B. And this is very helpful if you don't have color pencils. All right, so make sure that you use different symbols. And if you do have color pencils handy, what you can do is just plot or connect the dots in different colors so the readers can see the, d the data sets much more clearly. And besides, the colors make the graphs prettier. Okay, so that concludes our vodcast on how to create a double line graph. I hope you found that helpful.